can you explain what you think the risk of stable coins is and if it's just to crypto or to the broader financial system? A stable coin is essentially a bank deposit. I give $100 to the stable coin issuer and I get 100 stable coins. And I'm supposed to be able to redeem these coins on demand at par. So it's uh, exactly the kind of security, a debt security issued by a bank. Issue, these issuers are essentially banks. So if stable coins were to grow large, and if the technology improves, which it will, I'd be able to buy lunch with my stable coins. And then, then we would have the possibility of a bank run on all these stable coins. And the reason that's a possibility is because of the contract, it's demandable, but also because they're not regulated. They, we don't know what they really hold backing these coins, and there seems to be two views on that. Some people are skeptical, and some people just believe what they say. So uh, I think it's time to, to look into this carefully now rather than wait for the, uh, another financial crisis. What, what are they purportedly backed by today? And, and truly, does it really matter? Because if people were to sell all at once in a, in a kind of rush to get their liquidity back, um, no matter what the backing asset is, would come, come under immense selling pressure and its price would go down. And so you wouldn't be able, in theory, to get back par value. Yeah, that's the point. That's the problem. Yeah. I mean... We don't. Some of the, some of the stablecoin issuers are provide more detailed information about the backing than others. Some of them are very vague, uh, but there's no way they can really credibly convince us. I mean, some of them have accounting reports, but they're a little bit vague. So I think I think you know it's a problem, and there's no way for them to solve this problem because they're not regulated. They want they want to be regulated. They want to have bank charters, but on the other hand, they don't want to be regulated. So that's, I think, the problem for the government. I'm curious how this is all likely to play out. It seems as though, you know, well, Professor Gordon, if we've all been talking about how regulators might regulate Bitcoin or cryptos, is, is maybe actually the first step regulation of stable coins. And if they're classified like a money market mutual fund, will that actually have a, a cascading effect? You know, again, Circle and some of the others would say we're providing more transparency, more and more of our holdings are backed by treasuries and so on and so forth. And by the way, maybe all of this is an interesting reason why there's uh, been so much demand for treasuries and such low yields. But that quite aside, could we end up with a pretty status quo outcome here? If they, if they don't actually change that much uh, relative to what they look like today, one of the, the options you've presented in your paper is just banning them altogether. But... How likely do you think that would really be? Well, I don't think that's very likely because they already have a lobby. And, you know, the, the hype would be that it's the free market and we're squelching technology and blah, blah, blah. But I would point out that we've been through this before in 1863, and we decided that the government should supply money. We, we banned free bank notes that were issued by banks, and we went for the government issuing a currency. That's the route that China has taken, by the way. Mm -hmm. So the issue here is really, should the government supply money, or should we let the private sector try to supply money? Now, if you call them money market mutual funds, I mean, you know the problems with that. We made that mistake in the 70s. And in the crisis, they faced a run. And in March 2020, they faced a run. So we haven't solved that problem. 